Okay, so let's make a start then. I'm going to be doing this in a um, virtual machine. Uh, basically, I'll give myself 8 gigabyte of memory, which is more than enough. Uh, four processors, or four, four cores, if you like. Um, I've upped the memory to 32 megabytes, and I've got the VBox SVGA graphics controller. I think the VGA one's being made obsolete, so there was rec recommendations to not use that anymore. Um, I've got a virtual disk of 10 gigabytes, and I've downloaded the Cinnamon version of Linux Mint um, from the internet. Um, and then I've mounted that on the virtual optical drive. Um, so that's that. Um, network, um, I've set it to bridge as I normally do. So I've got access to um, my servers. Uh, USB I've turned off. But the network's probably not that important. It depends on how, if you're going to... If you're going to use the cross Linux from scratch image on another machine, then the network's an option to get the image, the files across onto that machine. Um, obviously, another way you could do it is to plug in a disk physically into the machine you're building on and transfer it that way, and then just walk the disk across the the, the machine that it's targeted for. So there's various ways. I'm not going to uh, demonstrate that I may do, but it's not my intention at the moment to do that. That that's something that I leave up to you if you want to do that. Um, it's not really the point of this video. The, the point of the video is just to show the um, the compiling of Linux from scratch and the result, um, not not how you get that across. Because it could be done in a number of ways. It depends what the target machine is, um, and so on, and what sort of connectivity you've got, and so on. And, and as usual, I, I haven't got the USB turned on. There's no need for that at all in this demonstration. So I'll start this off. The disk is blank, so the the um, optical drive will boot. So I'll get this going, and I'll just make this full screen as well. Wait for it to boot. Okay, so here's the Linux Mint desktop. So, first of all, get a browser up. Okay, and you can see it's come up with the default Linux Mint uh, web page. In fact, if you want to know where to get the ISO from, let's go to the start, www.linuxmint.com. Let's go to the Download tab here. And if you scroll down, the ISO that I'm running is this one here, Cinnamon 64-bit. That's the version I'm running, but obviously you've got these other options. Um, you could try running 32-bit, so it's probably going to be less of a problem but I guess running from 64-bit makes a bit more of an impact and the fact that we, we're targeting a 32-bit processor and it's a processor of um, a, a far older generation than the one we're building on so it, it doesn't really matter it's it's down down to you but I say this is the one that I've downloaded so I'll just click on that and just select a mirror nearby <coughs> So um, there you go, there's that image there that we're running. So I'll cancel that. And the other thing I want to do is get a terminal up. I'll get a couple of these up. And I'll just zoom in a little bit, make these bigger. Just going to be a similar layout to the other videos I've done. I'm going to have the browser on the left and the terminal on the right. I've just opened up another tab for 
other stuff to do that won't interrupt the work that we're doing. Um, so, you know, if we get any problems or anything, it's um, handy to have another tab. Okay, so let's just resize that down there. Okay, so the um, Cross Linux from Scratch website is on. Oh, one thing I'll do before I go any further actually is set the preferences um, for the keyboard and the language just so I don't get caught out. So I want to change the keyboard layout and add an English one. UK, get rid of the American one, and that should be that. So I'll just test that. Yep, that's working correctly. And the other one I want to set is the language. So these are things you may want to do if you're not um, American. So I'll just click on that there, select English, just click on that region one, select English, and then just click this apply system wide button. And that's that done. Okay, so the Cross Linux from Scratch web page is on trctrack.clfs.org. Hopefully it's working. It does seem to be, yeah. Uh, so that's the main web page. And to read the um, manual, the book online, just click this read button here. And the last stable release is 3.0.0 .0, and as I say that's quite a little bit older, I can't remember what date it is now. Oh it's 2014 so it's it's like five years old. So I wouldn't wouldn't recommend doing that. That's a, a bit too old that is. Um so the one that I gonna go through is the development one. So it's under this development here. Don't do the sysroot development one, that's something else. So I click the sysv in it, you can see it's dated 2017, in fact there's a, I presume that's an SVN um, date the last time it was checked in, so it's the 2nd of July 2017, so, so it's um, two and a half years old or so. So select your target architecture, we're going for 32 bits, and before I go on any further I'm going to straight away go to my server version in case this goes down halfway through the demonstration It? No, obviously typed something wrong, so let's start here. Right, okay, so here we go. So 32 bits is what we're going to be targeting. And here's the start of the book. So let's get past all this. You might want to read this in your own time. It's probably give you a better idea of um, how the... Um, CLFS works. So similar to Linux from scratch, it's got host system requirements. Now, there's I don't know if it's the age of the um, the instructions, in, but there doesn't seem to be as many requirements. Or I don't know if it, things are done slightly differently, differently to how Linux from scratch is built. Um, so I don't know if the requirements are less because of that or if it's because it's built slightly differently, I, I'm not sure, but um, it's adequate anyway, it, it does work. So if we just copy this script and run it, it will tell us what we're missing. So what I'm going to do first of all is become the root permanently. So I'll do sudo su dash, and I'll run this script in, and it quite nicely tells us what 
what's missing. We've got G++ missing and make info. So this is similar to the um, Linux from scratch build I did on Ubuntu. Hardly surprising because Mint is based on Ubuntu. Um, the C++ compiler is missing and make info which is from the text info package is also missing. So um, what we need to do is fetch them and in fact when I was testing this I found there's actually um, we need a third package and then Curse's dev package to be installed. So if I try and install the first one I found that it comes up with one of these weird messages that I don't understand because I don't know at at all well. Um, but I found to get around this problem, if I do an apt update, so we're just updating all the indexes to the packages. When we do the apt install G++ now, it now works. So that's fix that. So we also need text info and as I say I found that we need ncurse's dev package as well. So it's those three packages we need to install. It does say the because we've specified that ncurse's dev package it says it's actually gonna copy this package instead but that's fine it does work. So we'll get those three packages, let them install. Just wait a minute or so for that. Okay, so that's done. So if we rerun this version check script, you can see it says compilation successful at the bottom and there's no other errors so we can check our versions against what's required so bash 2.05a is required we've got 4.49 bin utils 2.12 and versions greater than 2.28 are not recommended so we've actually got 2.30 but as I've built this and uh, it built okay there's no problems with it so we can ignore that bison one dot 875 we've got 3.04 by the way if you do ever build this again in the future and the versions have got bigger then you could always rebuild an early version of bin utils it might not work but there's a possibility to rebuild it and use it use the older version that way rather than the system one uh, bzip 102 we've got 106 core utils 5 we've got 8.28 um, diff utils 2.8, we've got 3.6. Find utils 4.120, we've got 4.7, so that's fine. Gork 3.15, we've got 4.14. Now GCC, it needs 4.1.2, versions greater than 7.10, not recommended as they have not been tested as before. So, hardly surprising being bin utils, GCC, part of the tool chain, they're all highly, highly connected. This is also greater than what's recommended, but as I say, 7.4 did work, yeah, there's no problem. And G is the same as well. GLibc 2.2.5, we've got 2.27. And once again, it's part of the tool chain, it's actually bigger than what's recommended, but it does work. Grep 2.5, we've got 3.1, that's okay. GZ124, we've got 1.6. Make 3.80, we've got 4.1. Incursus 5.3, we've got Incursus 6.1. So interestingly, here's an example of how old this um, cross Linux from scratch version is. We're actually going to be installing Incursus version 6.0. So the system we're building on has got version 6.1. So we're actually we'll be building an old one, we'll be actually going backwards normally when you're building Linux from scratch because uh, at each release they're the latest stable packages you tend to always be building um, versions that are newer than the host system 
especially if you're build, uh, building from a, a live seed, a live CD or live DVD. So patch 2.5.4, we've got 2.7.6, Z3.0.2, and we've got 4.4, TAR 1.22, we've got 1.29, text info 4.7, we've got 6.5, and egg Z, we've got 4.99, and we've got 5.2.2. So that's all good to go. Now one thing if you've done the Linux from scratch build before is you'll recall there's a check on um, some sim links as to whether they point to Gork and Ork and what they point to and there's one for Bash to make sure that the SH sim link is pointing to Bash. There's no checks like this and I was a bit wary about this but it does work as it is so we don't need to worry about changing any links or checking those links. These instructions, trust them they do work. So go a bit about typography and structure and you'll notice if you've never done this before that there's one extra stage compared to Linux from scratch. Um, that stage being the cross compile tools. What we do is create some cross compile tools which is then used to create the temporary um, Linux from scratch area which is then used to create the final system and the cross compiler tools are to enable us to target the different architecture and that's why this, this extra stage is in here so it's absolutely necessary so there's a page about an errata and some acknowledgements and we can finally get into how to build this there's a change log and some information on where to go for help if you get stuck and how to provide error messages so we're moving on to section 2 preparing for the build and you'll notice a lot of similarity with Linux from scratch this project is based on Linux from scratch and it's been modified to to work with the cross compiling so the first thing we're going to do is to create a variable called CLFS and that will point to our mount point in the file system where we'll build all the programs onto the hard disk we've got ready. We will, we will get ready. So it tells us minimal system requires 6 gigabytes. Um, and so on. We've got 10 gigabytes, so there's plenty of room. More than enough. I think the final output, um, everything including the expanded Linux kernel, which is about a gigabyte, the total is just under 4 gig. So, I'll give you an idea of how much space you need. You, you'd probably get away just about with a 4 gig drive if you're tight for space. So, first thing we better do is run fdisk on our drive which is SDA, uh, if I just list it, I can show you it's a 10 gig drive, Just I just took the default when I created this virtual machine, and it just happened to be 10 gig, so I'm going to show you there's nothing there, I'm going to create a new partition, I'm not going to bother with separate boot partitions or even swap partitions, um, uh, the 8 gig I've given for this machine is more than enough we shouldn't ever need a swap partition so I'm not, not going to bother with that and if I do find out we run out of memory then I'll just create a, a small swap file and add that in but I don't envisage that being a problem so create a primary, pro uh, primary partition partition number one let's take the default take the default take the default and you see it's created a partition of 10 gigs so I'll just write that and now we can um, format it. Um, one thing it does recommend here which the Linux from scratch book doesn't is to be concerned about features that may be on the um, boot medium i.e. this live DVD um, that might be enabled that would uh, be transferred across onto any any disk that we create with the um, MK2 FS um, I've never had that problem um, and normally I'd ignore this because 
generally you'd, you'd be booting off a, a recent um, uh, live DVD, which is what we're doing, and you'd be creating a recent um, version of Linux from scratch. But being this is two and a half years old, um, the E2FS progs patch, package may have been updated in such a way that we may format our disk and put some um, attributes on that partition that these older versions of the E2FS programs and maybe other tools may not recognize. So I think I would recommend doing what it says here to download, basically, I think it's the version of E2FS progs that the CLFS uses, compiling it and using this to format the partition rather than the newer version that's come with the um, with the boot medium, with the live DVD we've booted from. So what we've got to do is find out where E2FS progs is. So let's get a another tab open, and if you look for additional pack, uh, sorry, all packages. And this is all the links to all the packages. So let's look for E2FS. So it's 1.43.4. So yeah, it's, it's the version that we're using here, which makes sense. So let's copy that link. Dip wget and that file. Okay, that's downloaded fine. So let's follow these. So let's talk about putting this in temp. It's not absolutely necessary. We can tidy up where we are in the road. We're, we're on a live DVD, so it's going to get lost eventually anyway. Um, obviously, if you're using your your own live system that you normally use, you might want to consider putting this in temp anyway. Um, but for our purposes, this demonstration, it's fine. So let's um, expand this package. And go into it, and it says to make a build directory and just do configure. So, we're just doing a basic quick and dirty configuration, and then we'll make it. And as you can see, we're just going to run the we're not going to install it because we don't want to, we're only building it just to get access to the make e2fs program so that we can format this drive uh, yeah this partition that we've created on this drive okay so we'll do make Use all four cores I've got just for a bit of speed. Right, this failed. Um, yeah, I think it failed when I was testing. I think it's to do with the age of this E2FS progs. Um, so I couldn't get a workaround for this. So it looks like we might have to use a slightly newer version, even down to using the one that's on the system, despite what I said. Um, in fact, thinking about it, I think I did use the one on the system um, as I couldn't get a workaround for this within a reasonable time. Um, yeah, I think we'll ignore this. 
and just use one on the system it should work with any luck there hasn't been any major changes but normally um, you'd probably want to do this just in case or check to see if there have been any major changes it says here how you can find out what features are on the disk um, but you'd have to format it first to find out um, so for example if I did E2FS sorry MKE2FS on our partition so I'm just creating a basic X2 partition here just so there's more compatibility um, if I run this in on the partition we've just formatted you'll see it's only got these ones here it says if the output contained any, any other of these well um, in fact it looks like one two three four five six six oh, it looks like it is okay. I think when I first did this, um, admittedly it wasn't on Linux Mint, I don't think. I was getting other attributes and that's why I was concerned about not formatting with the system one, but it looks like this one on Mint is fine. So let's just check that it's X80TR, that's there. Resize inode, that's there. Dir index is there, file type is there, sparse super is there, and large file. Yeah, it, it's fine. It says if the output contains anything other than those, then the host system may have custom enhancements. So we're okay. We, we don't need to worry about this in this case. Um, so we formatted our drive now. I'm not going to create a swap partition. Uh, it's unnecessary. So let's go on to mounting new partition let's just double check our CLFS variable is set it is and we can go ahead with um, all oh right okay we're exporting it again here so it's just making sure that we have got it set let's create these directories I'll do these one at a time just so we can see the output rather than copying them in bulk all right okay let's concentrate so that's our partition. We've mounted it on our CLFS um, directory, the mount point. Um, and here it's saying if you do split up your drive to mount them, uh, make make the directories the mount points and then mount them on those mount points. 